founder of The Art of Standing Out. And thank you for joining us in the Story Cafe. Here in the Story Cafe, we talk to leaders working with business professionals and businesses, helping them accomplish more. And today I am honored to have Abby O'Neill join me in the cafe to talk about how she works with businesses and the unique perspective and point of view that she brings um, to the work that she does to deliver the value businesses want her to help them achieve. Abby, welcome to the show. Hello, Arthur. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Abby is an experience and engagement strategist, culture cultivator, resilience and well-being coach. I think today, as we sit here in 2021, the skills that Abby brings in service to the pros and businesses that she serves, it's just not Abby saying these things are important. It's MIT, it's the World Economic Forum that are saying that we need to talk to Abby to learn what she knows so we can accomplish more. And I'm just gonna read you two paragraphs from an MIT Sloan management review. And it says to avoid mass long-term unemployment, we must prioritize and pour efforts into preparing workers for the jobs of the future. Increasingly, these are the kinds of jobs that focus on uniquely human skills that current technologies cannot simulate. Things like empathy, problem solving, collaboration and communication. Increasing such skills not only helps workers, but also has real business implications. Human skills make companies stronger. When I read that some months ago, it was like, boom, are you kidding me? Because everybody's talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, neural networks, uh, robotics. We're using those tools in the work that we do. People are leaning into those tools because they know that they're there to help us accomplish more. But what MIT Sloan and the World Economic Forum are saying is that increasingly these kinds of skills that are important are the human skills that Abby and I, in my own way, are helping the clients that we serve nurture. And those human skills, if I say Google loud enough, three devices in my office light up and are prepared to answer a question for me. Um, I live in an enchanted office, right? And my home is enchanted. I mean, I can turn the thermostat up. I can change the channel on the TV without leaving my easy chair. If you had asked me how I did that 20 years ago, I would have to get up and find the remote that I couldn't find. Or if I was old enough in that era, I'd have to ask the grandchild how to work the remote even. <laughs> now, now it's just a matter of, of using the enchanted technologies that are at our disposal. And those technologies have created a thing called digital Darwinism. That's when technology advances faster than people and businesses can keep up. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, VUCA is entered into the equation. And VUCA is this notion of volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. And in a world of digital transformation, in order to take the chaos out of the world, you've got to nurture your human skills. And this is why we're talking to Abby today. And, <laughs> and that's a long intro, but I kind of wanted to set the table because Abby is kind of like our Yoda, right? She's our Obi-Wan. She's the mentor that can tell us what we need to do and how we need to do it to get in contact or can, and to connect with the skills that enable us to be more human at work and as leaders in business but enough of me talking about what Abby does. Let's ask Abby to explain to us how she does what she does and how the people that she's doing it for changed after they get her services. So Abby, I'm gonna zip it up now and, <laughs> and hand you the mic. Um, well, I think I shared with you, it, it doesn't feel that complex to me, but I do think that it takes a lot of untangling for some people to really wrap their minds around. This notion of integrating mindfulness and that humanness into the workplace feels a little newer. I think some people are used to it now. Some people are just catching on. I still talk to leaders today who, th who say to me, why do I need that? Why is that important? And so it takes some conversation, you know, it's, 
how do you want the person to show up? What do you want of this person? It's not just they're checking the boxes, they're doing this task, they're completing this particular project, but how exactly are they showing up with you and with other people in the organization? Because it doesn't matter how large or small the organization is, we're all working with other people. We all have to show up with other people. And so to do that in the best way, the kindest way is to be centered, to be grounded and to really understand ourselves, to have that self-awareness. I think that's something that can combat VUCA. You mentioned, um, you know, self-awareness I think is step one to understanding how to move through times of VUCA. And right now the reality is VUCA is happening all the time. <laughs> It's happening almost every moment of every day. Uh, you know, we, we think about things like machine learning. Yes, that makes things more convenient. It makes a lot of things easier. It doesn't solve the problem of people. And that humanness is what we have to show up with every day. The people in the process matter because it's those people that assure that the fluidity of the numbers in the books continue to rise and the business grows. So bringing your whole self to, to work is, when you said whole self, that is the transparency and authenticity, I think really brings more of our vulnerability forward in meetings and in, in business process. And maybe that's where the magic happens. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have, you know, I've had coaching conversations with individuals and they're talking to me about their dilemmas with their supervisor or a colleague. And I say, well, what would you, how do you feel? What would you like to say? What is happening inside? And they say something to me and I say, what would happen if you said that to that person, you know, just open yourself up. What's the scariest thing that could possibly happen if you just said that? Um, but sometimes, you know, I had a, a conversation with somebody maybe a month or so ago. She was suffering from a really challenging situation with her manager. And I said, okay. And she was so, she was so nervous. She was so scared to go into this conversation. She was expecting the absolute worst. And I said, we, you know, we had the whole conversation. We talked about how it would play out, what she might say, what she wanted to get out of it, how she expected the other person to show up and how she might respond to that in that situation. And I said, but before you do anything, before you get on this Zoom call with your manager, put your feet on the ground, take a couple of deep breaths. That's all it takes. And just know in the moment, if something triggers you, if something challenges you, something sparks something where you wanna you know, defend yourself or jump in, just take a pause. There's nothing wrong with taking a pause. And sometimes that level of mindfulness, people don't think of that as mindfulness, but sometimes it's that simple. And that can change how we show up in the workplace of just taking a breath or taking a pause and just creating a little bit of space. That's so beautifully said, you know, in design, uh, less is more, less mm -hmm. often perceived as elegance. And so that's a very elegant way of, of lowering your blood pressure, of bringing your comfort level into alignment with the, the intention. And mm -hmm. I, I, there's uh, someone that I know through LinkedIn and uh, we paneled together early this last year and her practice is built almost entirely around compassion Mm -hmm. We don't think of compassion as integral to our success in business. Mm -hmm. But what you just described is that moment when self-care by taking that breath or what she says that she does is she puts her hand over her heart yeah, and feels it until it calms down. And then she'll take whatever action is necessary. Oh, that's, that's a very human practice yeah. that seems very simple when you think about it. But I know that only after hearing her say that was a hack that have I done it and it works it in does. the same way that breath work. If I'm going on to, to the speak at the podium and there's five people or 500 people in the audience, what do I do 
mm-hmm. to get myself excited about the moment, but then to bring myself into focus, yeah. what hack do I have? Those are all human hacks that we are, are using to tune our humanness mm-hmm. to perform at our optimal level. And I, I know that oftentimes we need a, a Yoda or an Obi-Wan to make us a hero in our own story to show us what the tools are that we can use uh, to perform at our best. I, I think Einstein kind of said what I'm trying to say best. He said that we have learned to worship the rational mind and all the technology and we've forgotten intuition, but yes. intuition is a sacred gift that we've always had. And it sounds like your practice is, is built on helping us connect with the sacred gifts that we all have. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're a part of who each of us is and it's just finding the pathways to connect with them that can help us achieve things that we didn't know were possible before and um, kudos to you for building a practice around that and I, I don't know I know when I shared this article with you you hadn't seen it before and it's funny that I guess great minds think alike Abby the World Economic Forum and MIT Sloan believe what Abby believes. So if they, <laughs> if, if they endorse what Abby's doing and Abby endorse is what they're saying, you can't go wrong. These human hacks um, help us accomplish more in business. That means help us be more creative and innovative. And if as a business, I can inspire my people to be more creative and innovative, that's competitive advantage. And the creativity and innovation are coming from igniting the possibilities is an inside out practice. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this other higher level of practice that informs the the work that you do? Sure. Um, Well, so I want to say, I think I want to touch back on a phrase that you used just a minute ago. It's an inside job. And it's interesting because on an individual level, I do help people work from the inside out. And at organizationally, or an organizational level, I help them think from the outside in. And so it's just, it's fascinating how the two of those can come together and be so powerful if we really harness what that's all about. But to answer your question, I think what we're in a period of is needing to relearn how to listen listen to ourselves, listen to others. And so it's really, it's about channeling the energy in a way that helps us flow more freely through this world and more intentionally and more in tune with who we are. We all have this inner wisdom and some people are very in touch with that. And some people have no idea what I'm talking about, (laughs) but we all have it. And you use the word intuition a little while ago absolutely if we operated from a sense of deep wisdom intuition when we're practicing our work in the workplace that's just super smart way smarter than machine learning could ever be smarter than ai could ever be i mean we just we've been around for a while and if we can just tune in And sometimes it takes another person to help us clear all of the junk that we sometimes absorb as we're walking through the world and meeting other people and, you know, taking other things on from other people. Sometimes some people are very empathetic. And so they're just absorbing everything from everyone else, all the emotions. And sometimes they don't know that they're doing that. And sometimes it takes somebody else being able to help them clear that out. So that's really about helping people just clear those channels and tap back into what their deepest knowing really is and be able to use that to their advantage. If VUCA, there it is once again, is volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity, and digital transformation, robotics, machine learning, AI are disrupting so much of our world. And digital Darwinism says technology is advancing faster than some people can keep up. Yeah. Just that part of VUCA, it's not, VUCA is the pandemic, social unrest, financial insecurity, climate change, all of those things are swirling outside our 
window of every business and every individual home, mm-hmm. challenging us to, 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 to survive and hopefully thrive even with that tornado outside the window. That's the stuff that gets into our mix yeah. and, and causes static and confusion. Mm-hmm. VUCA can be outside the window, but if we're not careful, it can get inside of us and cause a different kind of chaos. Mm-hmm. We could talk about this for quite a long time because I think there's a lot, there's a lot of points on this, this design, the human design. And, and I think our, each of us has the opportunity to find that grappling point that we can hold on to our humanness. And, and I'm not saying resist Elon Musk and the neural net patch he wants to put in your brain. But before we do that, be sure you connect with as much of your humanness as you can, because after all, we are all we have and uh, the robots are coming. So let's maximize us our human skills make each of us stronger, and because we are the uh, we are the value that bring value to the businesses that we serve. Um, that's why human skills make companies stronger too. Um, Absolutely. You want to be a stronger business? Talk to Abby. I have a few ideas of my own, but <laughs> together we can help you uh, connect with your human skills so you and your business can accomplish more. Abby, thanks for joining this conversation and talking about your point of view and the practice that you've built. And maybe in another session, we can go a little deeper and and go a little wider, giving people ideas about how they can connect with their humanness too. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Arthur. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. Until next time, everybody, this is Art Jones and Abby O'Neill in the Story Cafe talking about how human skills make companies stronger. And um, we're here to help. Until next time. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.